While I was sitting there, I was just reminded of the story with my son. I took him on the boat, and the fisherman was teaching us uh, how to catch lobster. And he grabbed this lobster, and right when I thought he was going to take it and kill it, he tagged it and threw it back. And I asked him, why didn't you kill that lobster? He said, because I checked and it was pregnant. So whenever you catch a pregnant lobster, you tag it. And I began to think about everybody in this room who've been through some stuff and survived some stuff. And you've been frustrated because you've been asking God, why does it feel like every time I turn around, I'm being tagged? I come to give you an announcement. It's because you're pregnant with something. Welcome back. That was Pastor Mike Jr. At the biggest gospel award there is picking up the Stellar Award for Male Artist of the Year 2022. And Pastor Mike Jr., music and message is inspiring millions around the world from his sermons at Rock City Church in Birmingham, Alabama, where he's the founder and senior pastor, to his popular posts on social media like this one. Take a look. They go fire, girl. Get you some gas, girl. Wait, come back. Come. All right, we go another five. Now you got ten. Come back, come back. Sit, sit, come back. We go another five. Thank you. Hey, come back. No, see. See, some of y'all gonna miss God because since she got it all at once, you're gonna be comparing. But God said, I'm gonna give you a cluster. Which means you may not get it all at the same time, but it's going to be a steady flow. Now, yeah. that single post on Instagram received almost a million views on Instagram. And it was just four years ago that Pastor Mike made it big in the gospel world with his first album, Live Free, hitting number one on the Billboard gospel album charts. And he is back with us to talk about all of that success. You know, it's interesting watching you watch yourself in that social media clip where you're teaching the lesson of sometimes it comes in a cluster, sometimes it comes one at a time. You started clapping at your own words. Yeah. Because even we, you're saying it, but you need, everybody needs reminding of the message. Everybody needs reminding. I, there are two types of people. Either you've been hurt or you're being hunted. Oh. And what I've discovered so many times is that when we can't get over the hurt, it keeps us stuck. And when we can't get over what's haunting us, it keeps us running. Oh. And so in this season of my life, man, seeing all of this come full circle, just a kid from Birmingham, Alabama, and to be sitting here with you oh, and seeing that. You know, some might say it was destiny that yeah. you're here. This is a part of your legacy. Your family history yeah. includes leadership, yeah. messages, hope, faith. That's in your blood, your DNA. Yeah, my father's a pastor and my grandfather's Bishop Calvin Woods, civil rights legend. Yes. Uh, yeah. He was the last person to see Dr. King alive before Dr. King uh, was murdered. Dr. King wouldn't move in Birmingham without my grandfather. So while most kids had the opportunity to go outside and run the streets, I would be at my grandparents' house uh, hearing about stories between him and Abernathy and Shuttlesworth. Oh. Uh, and so I truly, and this is exciting to me, I stand on the shoulders of giants. Mm. And, and for that man, it means the world to me. So I had no other choice but that to no serve choice. God. So when you decided to start your church, it was 10 of you, right? That's right. 10. 2009, yep. Ten so if us. you were the disciples, you were short too. <laughs> <laughs> but you had 10 we with had 10. you. Um, talk to me about that decision, because that's a big leap, because now you, the expectations yeah. of others yeah. are on your shoulders. Yeah, I was 25. I didn't know who I was as a man, let alone somebody's pastor. But I got tired of seeing people who look like me die senselessly. And I discovered if I go across the water right now, they may not speak my language, but I have to find an interpreter. Mm -hmm. And I felt like the Lord said, Mike, you're going to be an interpreter for a generation that's leaving church. So in 2009, it was 10 of us. 2011, uh, maybe 1,000. Yeah. But the 2012, thousands of people start coming. So you went from 10 like to thousands in a couple of years. That's right. Absolutely. Thousands. Yes, ma'am. You know, part of the message, which is just, I was watching how you were relating and, you know, you're using the yeah, money as yeah. an example, is that you keep it so real. So often people see church or faith as something unobtainable. It's, some people believe it's like, okay, you have to be perfect. You have to do everything right. You're saying, no, there are imperfections in all of us and there are challenges yeah, in all of us. Right. And you talk openly about depression. Yeah. Even at your highest moment, yeah. experiencing that anxiety. Yeah. 
So, so many people are pregnant with vision, but sometimes it's miscarried by lack. Mm. Have a hundred dollar dream on a million dollar dream on a hundred dollar budget. Yeah. Like myself, I wrestle with anxiety. I wrestle sometimes with depression. Some of my lowest nights came after my highest days. You won Artist of the Year. I won Artist of the Year, and, and that night, I'm literally sitting in the room, and I can hear voices. What are you gonna do next? Because oh. I want people to know you won Artist of the Year, That's and right. then you go back to your room. Yeah. And that night you fall into depression. Yeah, I, I'm literally in tears because one, I don't know what I did to get here. And then two, oh. the pressure sometimes uh, of outside expectations. But for me, it was internal expectation because I understand the weight that comes with responsibility. Mm -hmm. So, and I, and, I, and I tell everybody, it's called the principle of individuality. Yeah. That if me and you both went to the workout gym mm -hmm. and we did the same exact exercises, your body would look different than mine yeah. because it impacts you differently. Absolutely. Uh, and, and what we do with grief sometimes is we try to make grief cookie cutter. Mm -hmm. Where we say things like, well, I've been through that, so you should be strong. No, what I'm going through, you may not love your mother like I love my mother. <laughs> yeah. Or you may not be hurting like yeah. I'm hurting. So I believe until, especially in the church, I was just telling someone the other day, I, of course it's a compliment when people say, you're so resilient, yeah. but then lately I said, I don't want to be resilient. <laughs> I, I want you to know that I'm vulnerable and that yeah. I am weak and I have to get on my knees and pray and say, God, guide my words, That's because right. this is a responsibility. Right. So I said, I kind of want people to ease up on saying resilient, yeah. because we use it as a crutch sometimes not to allow people to be vulnerable yes. and failure. And, yeah. and you talk a lot about that. It's something, it's something that I, I said I wanted to coin. It's called toxic positivity. Oh. And that's an oxymoronic statement. Mm -hmm. Toxic positivity. It's when we look at people like yourself, or people in this audience. Audience, everybody, home, all of us experience it. And they say stuff to you like, well, you strong. You got well, that. You got that. Yeah. Or, they, or they do things like, well, I know you gonna make it. Right. And, and although my desire is to make it, although they were complimenting me in a positive yeah. way, the feeling that I feel of the pressure, it now becomes toxic to me. Right. And I want to normalize saying, hey, I'm not okay. Yes. I want to normalize being able to say, hey, today ain't the day, in the words of Brandy, it's just one of them days. This one of them days. One of them uh, days. Monica, it's just one of them oh days. Oh my God. Man. Yeah. When we come back, Pastor Mike Jr.'s new album, Impossible, dropped earlier this month. What inspires his songs? We've got to talk about winning. What inspired that one right after the break? My name's Pastor Mike Jr. It's trying to see if you wanted to buy my CD. It's really good. Call Impossible. Uh, it has one prayer with Tamala Mann, James Fortune, Kier Sheard, my mom, 1K Few. Even on the back, I did a little post. I'm gonna just go through your mailbox and see if a check came in. Okay, look like a check came. I'm gonna um, I'm gonna just take the 11.99 out of this and just I'm gonna leave the CD right there. Okay, thank you, <laughs> thank you. Welcome back. That's a doorbell camera video. That's for Mike Jr. <laughs> going door to door, doing it old school, promoting his new album. Uh, it's so good to have you still uh, with us. That like, do these things just pop in your head? How do they? What is this? I was, I was at the uh, so that's my office, my administrative office, and I was sitting there and I was like, man, I gotta find a way to get the word out. And literally, my CFO was sitting there looking at the doorbell camera, and I was like, record. <laughs> So literally, my mom called because she doesn't know it's TikTok. Run! They gonna get you. They gonna get you. So it was it was a blessing, this is man. Adorable. The album Impossible. That's right. The inspiration behind it. Man, I believe we're living in difficult, arduous times, man. Mm -hmm. And I wanted the message. Uh, when I put an album together, it's not just a collection of songs. It's what is my message for 24 months. And for the next 24 months, I want to travel the world telling people God is still doing mm -hmm. the impossible. Which is so interesting because your son, Xander, who's yeah. 15, recently said to you he wants to do what you do. Yeah, man, it was crazy. We were at the World Games, so shout out to my city, uh, Birmingham, Alabama. Yeah. The World Games came to Birmingham, and literally 60, 70,000 people oh. in an arena, and I got a chance to do big and amazing. Yeah. And we get back in the back, and my son's just looking at me. I'm like, what's wrong? He was like, you him. And I was like, him? Who's him? <laughs> And he was like, no, dad, that's what we mean. Then he looked at me and it meant the world. So keep in mind that weekend, I won six Stella Awards that weekend. Wow. The next day I performed at the World Games and the highlight of that weekend was my oldest son saying, dad, I think I want to do that. Aww. I was like, oh, hey. So that's Xander, man. Your, 
your son Michael turns 15 today. Today, today. is Michael's birthday. Look Happy at this birthday, family. Michael. So, okay. Okay, let's let's shout out everybody in the picture here. So that's Michael at the top. Happy birthday. That's Xander. Over here is my football star. That's Mason. That's my baby girl, McKinley. <laughs> and that's the king right there. That's Miles. And that's my wife, Jaquita. Oh Lady my Jane. God. That's right. <laughs> But, you know, you have one of the songs on the album, Still Here. That's right. And it features your mother. That's right. Um, again, this full circle family moment. And yeah. you were, her being on there means so much because of what's been going on. Yeah, so that's my mom right there, man. So imagine she wakes up, says, I don't feel well. And out of nowhere, we take her to, like, the urgent care. Just yeah. thinking it's the flu. We find out that day she has sepsis, which is an infection <laughs> in her blood. The doctors come into the room and they literally say to us, there are three medicines we can give her. We need you guys to pick. The only problem is it takes three days for us to know if it's working. And after that, it's just touch and go. So we prayed and I picked. I said, oh, here we go. Every day I brought my mom 12 dozen roses, 12 dozen, 12 dozen roses to the point you couldn't see the floor. And she always wanted to record. But you know, real mama sometimes, they're gonna put they self, put your kids before everybody. Everything. So literally once she got better, me and my friend Jason Claiborne uh, and Bar or we put together a song entitled Still Here. And I brought her to the studio that day and surprised. She had never been in the studio. So when you hear Still Here, she's singing and she gets excited. And I got a churchy mama. She done got the <laughs> shout. I ain't talking about crunk. She got the shout, shout. So that's my mama. I love her. Her and my dad. I mean this. Everything I am and everything I will ever be, and I want to say this publicly. It's because of my parents, man. They love me, they honor me, they prepared me, so I'm excited. You know, oh, we started out and I said, you know, you'd won all of these stellar awards and I was so stunned that, you know, here you were performing winning and you're still accepting that part. You know, it's such a dichotomy. You speak with such confidence and you've inspired, I'm sitting up straighter in your company and <laughs> I'm gonna probably run out and get in a recording studio. You make me think I can sing. <laughs> but here you are still finding your comfort zone with winning. So many people like myself, uh, you suffer from insecurity while there are people around you who are threatened by your potential. Yeah. And what I discovered for me is, Winning is the most uncomfortable thing for me. <laughs> I'd rather help you win yeah. versus win myself. We, um, in my city during the pandemic, people were struggling, so we came together and paid off a million dollars worth of medical yes. debt for everybody in my city. Yes. And for me, it was Howard Thurman who said, don't ask what the world needs, but rather ask what makes you come alive and do that. Yeah. But what the world needs are people who come alive. So for me, I come alive seeing other people win. So right. for me, it's still... Even when they say things like 11 times, I'm like, ah. <laughs> But so, is that, so that explains a lot of the philanthropic work you do, yeah. paying off people's bills yeah. and going in and helping people. Yeah. Um, it is in so many ways, you give us with your music, you give us with your message, but this is you doing that for yourself. And you even, I, you coach for your son, Miles' Ooh, team. Yeah. Like, like, oh. hey, that, that's me, they're my boys right Look. there. So yes, man, so that's Miles right there at the bottom. Uh -huh. so, so I believe in balance. And, and so for me, balance is not order, one, two, three, four, yeah. it's orbit. Uh -huh. So the same way the solar system revolves around the S-U-N, my life revolves around the S-O-N, which is the son of God. So uh -huh. there are times when music isn't as important as my babies. Yeah, so, we actually have a clip of you. With the, let's listen uh -oh. to it. Uh-oh, uh-oh, uh-oh. Hello, championship. They're headed to the championship. They're headed to the championship. Who's going to the championship? Who's going to the championship? Who's going to the championship? Two calls to the replay. Two calls to the replay. The championship game is set, and it's against their rival, the Chiefs. The last time they met, it was a nail biter, and the Raiders came out on top. How will they handle the elements? Coach McClure brings them in. <laughs> Well, it was a nail biter, and I wish I could say we won a championship, but we won a championship. <laughs> hey, I'm not gonna say you winning and not win. Pastor Mike, you are everything, you so everything. I, I just love you so much. And by the way, the latest album, Impossible, is available where music is sold and streamed. And guess what? Y'all are all going home with a copy. You get a CD. You get a CD. <laughs> <laughs>